America, the land of plenty. Where Dr. Christian's been learning the truth about the country's obesity crisis in Evansville, its fattest city. We've had large caskets for as young as 11 years old. I'm really distressed. He wants to stop us Brits from following suit. I found the whole thing really quite eye-opening in the amount of people involved, the cost of the equipment involved, how the NHS is ever going to cope with that, I have no idea. And swapping diets tonight, it's super-sized Saskia versus super-skinny Nick. I'm like three of you. <laughs> They'll be entering the feeding clinic to shock them into ditching their disastrous diets. Do you not think you should at least try to eat the porridge? I am eating what you normally eat. And changing their ways. I'm letting you down and I'm letting myself down, but I just can't eat the food. Plus, we're exploring the desperate world of life-threatening eating disorders. In one period of about nine months, I lost just over 11 stone. After all, it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. Britain's getting bigger. By 2030, it's predicted a fat 40% of us will be obese. But across the pond, Evansville, Indiana, is almost there. Do you think this problem's getting worse? Yes. The patients are sicker because of the obesity. And they require more frequent hospitalizations. Over the past six weeks, Dr. Christians witnessed the devastating impact obesity has had on the city and heard that some residents are reluctant to change. I don't want to do any of it, sorry. Health isn't important. No, it is. I just want nothing to do with it. But not here. According to the Gallup poll, which named Evansville as America's fattest city, 37.8% of the population are obese. And with a fast food joint on every corner, it's easy to see why. A study reports that in the US, portion sizes offered by fast food chains are two to five times larger than when first introduced, and the average American spends $500 or £313 a year on fast food. Scarily, us Brits spend more, shelling out £365 each on junk food. Why do people eat out so much? I think convenience. You get off work, you know, nobody wants to cook. It's a lot easier when you have more restaurants per capita than any other city. I'm sort of investigating why Evansville has got this accolade of America's fattest city. What, what's going on there? What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, that's a good point. I, I would say that probably people just uh, eat too much. Eating is really portion is everything's yeah, too big. Portions, yeah, portions, uh, yeah. And, you know, you've got to use some control sometimes. Dr. Christian wants to find out for himself what the people of Evansville find so hard to resist. So what's kind of the most popular dish here? What do people really choose most? Uh, our pulled pork and our barbecued ribs. Can I try some? You sure can. Whoa, OK. They are the biggest, baddest baby backs in the business. You've said it. <laughs> in a rack of ribs this size with coleslaw on the side, you're looking at a massive 2,300 calories. Although I don't really want to admit it, this is really good, but it is far too much for one person. The number of calories in this is phenomenal. And if you're eating this sort of thing regularly, then this is definitely going to make you pile on the weight. And with so many places serving up the same kind of fat-laden feasts, there's a lot to tempt the people of Evansville. So where do they seek redemption? Evansville falls within America's Bible Belt, and has even more churches than it does restaurants. So the parishioners of Bethel Temple have decided to call on God's help to win the city's battle against the bulge by mixing fitness with faith. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you will give strength and energy as the people in this room are working on body, mind, and spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, so we've got God in our souls, our spirits, is everybody ready to work out? Yeah. All right. yeah. Come on! Energy! Hey. Get your own plates here! Woo! Lift your hands! Well, here you go. I have 
I've seen it all now. Jesus and weight loss. Why not? We're doing joy jumps. We're doing power praises, uh, prayer arms like this. You're looking up to God. We feel that God can empower you to do maybe more than what you would have been able to do otherwise. What did you get out of this? Um, helping me lose weight. Why the sort of the gospel and the weight loss? How do they work together? Because God's there helping you get through it. I like the fellowship. I want to be healthier. And they don't judge you for being overweight. And they encourage you. And they're with you every step of the way. Well, I have to admit, not being a religious man, I was a little bit skeptical about this. But you know what? This was a good, high-energy, keep-fit class. And if you live in a country where you eat the sorts of foods that they have here, you need to be doing this regularly. And this is just what these guys are doing. It's perfect. Back in the UK, Dr. Christian's waging a war against weight on both ends of the scale. He's gathered all eight supersizers and eight super skinnies under one roof. They're getting some shock treatment by facing their opposites before they go into the feeding clinic to tackle their own bad habits. And tonight, Dr. Christian's chosen... Saskia, I'm going to pair you up with Nick. <laughs> Hi, Saskia. I'm like three of you. <laughs> I would like to lose about three stone. I want three stone, so I'll trade you. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Saskia's diet is dripping in fat, whereas food scientist Nick won't eat anything unless he's analysed the fat content first. I think I'm going to have my work cut out for me teaching these two about food. Saskia Roberts from South London is only 23 years old, but already her weight matches her age, and that's down to a love of one thing. My favourite type of food is Caribbean food. So I like jerk chicken, curry goat, rice and peas, um, patties, macaroni and cheese, fried chicken. I like Caribbean food a lot. Caribbean food has a lot of flavours, a lot of seasoning. It's delicious. So delicious, in fact, that one serving is never enough. At lunchtime, I'll probably go back for second. At dinner time, I'll probably go back for second. If there's some left, I'm always tempted to go back and have more. I don't know when I'm full. I think I do eat three times what an average person would eat. But eating for three is having an effect on mum of one, Saskia. My weight's stopping me from doing a lot of things. I'm just not fit enough to be running around after a two-year-old in the park. I don't like the way I look when I'm chasing him around as well. Oh, very relaxing. I kind of feel people look at me and judge me and then they kind of think, you know, how well are you looking after your son at the weight you are? But Saskia is not only being judged by strangers. I don't like the way I look. My arms, my legs, my bum, my chest, everything. I don't like my body at all. I have moments where I just sit down and cry and I think about all the things I want to change and it seems like such a big thing. And there's more than just vanity driving her desire to change. My family have a history of high blood pressure and diabetes and it's like I feel like I'm just a sitting duck waiting for it to happen. I'm 23 and I don't want to die of weight-related issues. I need to do something about it now. At the other end of the scale, 25-year-old Nick Harvey from Cardiff weighs in at just 7 stone 12 pounds. As a food analyst, Nick knows exactly what goes into our grub, but it seems that sometimes too much knowledge can be a bad thing. I'm really fussy about the foods that I eat. I read the labels on foods virtually every time I pick something up. The fat content, the salt content. I'm quite geeky about that sort of thing. So it's got quite a lot of sugar in this one. Quite a lot of salt is going around. And Nick is just as methodical when he sits down to eat. Never really mixed the food that I'm eating. I like to eat them one section at a time. It starts with my favourite. I'll eat the chicken, carrots, sweet corn, potatoes, broccoli. 
Nobody likes broccoli. Your food looks like you're experimenting on it. You don't cut your food up, you dissect it. Everything I do at work is broken down into little bits. For science boffin Nick, it's not just how he eats, but when too. My work's regimented by timings. I know what I'm going to eat and I know when I'm going to eat it. I have my porridge every day at 10.40am. Lunch is always at 1 o'clock. 2.45, there's always a break. And I usually snack on an orange. My vice is oranges. I eat a lot of oranges. But Nick's super low-fat diet and picky eating have taken their toll on his body. I see, like, my knobbly knees, like, my elbows, the parts of my ribs and stuff. I've always wanted to be bigger than I am rather than a skinny, twigglety boy. I control the food that I'm working with at work. I'd rather it not be able to control me. 15 stone, 9 pounds between them, both Nick and Saskia are in diet disaster zones. But before they enter the feeding clinic to tackle their relationships with food, Dr Christian wants to give supersized Saskia